many of the machine builders who exhibit here at the Assembly Technology Expo or outside of Chicago bring along what they call their show machine. It's not really a production machine, but it's a special assembly prototype sort of machine that demonstrates their capabilities in terms of their motion technology and their automation strategies. And that's the case at Ixmation Cox Systems. We're going to go visit their booth. Their automation expert is going to tell us about the automation strategies they employ, some of the motion technologies they have, and how that fits into their scheme for some specialty machinery that they build. So stick around. We'll be back in a minute. All right, we're here with Jim Barry. He's the electrical engineering manager at Exmation Cox Systems. He's going to tell us a little bit about what we're looking at today. Jim, thanks very much for giving us some time. Thank you, Joe. Before we get into the machine, tell me a little bit about Exmation Cox Systems and what you guys uh, what you guys do. I know you're a specialty machine maker. Tell us more. We're, we're a completely custom uh, assembly machine maker. We service uh, the medical market with both uh, medical devices and pharmaceutical, the pharmaceutical industry automotive and largely uh, currently alternative energy. Pretty much around the world? Around the world. We have locations in China and Malaysia and our headquarters are in Switzerland. Okay. Now this, as we as we learn, is, is really what you call a show machine. Absolutely. It's not a production machine as such, but it's here to demonstrate what you guys are capable of. Um, basic assembly module. So let's, um, let's walk through this a little bit. Um, Hi, we start with the indexing system. Sure. Uh, we're using this belt-driven, uh, servo-driven belt indexer as the primary indexing mechanism. It is more or less a synchronous indexer in that you see all the pallets index at the same time. Uh, this kind of a uh, indexing mechanism gives us a high degree of flexibility. For basically the same price, this machine can be 10 feet long or 50 feet long. Based on the same indexing system. Based on the same indexing system. And at each one of these uh, stops, we can either have um, a low degree of accuracy, what, like what you see right here where the pallet is simply stopped on the belt itself, or we can come up and have secondary uh, fixturing with this, like a shot pin right here. So you're locking in at that station. We're locking in right there. We can get a high degree of accuracy for precision assembly operations. Now, this is servo-driven? That's servo-driven belt. Uh, it's a servo index. We could, with that, we can have a variable pitch if we wanted to. Uh, typically, at the beginning of a project, we design to a, a specific pitch. So now we've got the robots picking up off of the pallet. Mm -hmm. um, here, all right, we got a vision system on one of them. Talk a little bit about what this robot's doing. Uh, the first FANUC here is just doing a simple pick operation. It's taking parts off the pallet in a specific order and somewhat randomly placing them on the conveyor. We're trying to you know, show some randomness where we're just dropping it free. So it's just been told conveyor. this pallet size, go to each corner, pick up a piece and put it on the, on the, on the conveyor. Absolutely. But then when we get to this side, we get something a little more sophisticated going on. Yeah, the, the, pallets, the parts are coming down the conveyor freely and there's a vision system, which is, that's a FANUC vision system that's acquiring uh, an image of each part as it's traveling down the conveyor. It's figuring out an XY theta offset, and it's doing an on-the-fly uh, conveyor track. It's picking the part up on the fly and then placing it into the correct location. On the it's almost like a two-dimensional flex picker. Not only are the parts coming in a random orientation, but we also have sort of a random order of the parts. Now, this is a, basically a smart camera system we're looking at here? Well, uh, the one on the, what's actually picking up the part is FANUC's uh, vision system. It's going right back to the FANUC control. As a ver verification, we have a Cognex Smart uh, Vision System right okay. here, watching the operation after it's been completed. Okay. Now, you had said when we were talking briefly before that the smart cameras in this system works very well for you, but you're thinking further down the line about um, maybe not having to rely quite so much on smart cameras for certain applications, getting into cameras that are firewired together a little bit. Well, yeah, we build very large systems quite often, and sometimes. Uh, when you're getting to a high camera count, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
and above, when you look at the cost of purchasing 10 smart cameras versus 10 firewire cameras and then bringing them back to a vision controller, um, there's a cost benefit there sure. for firewire. So, so in those cases, development software, like National's got um, development software, that would be applicable in some of these systems. Smart cameras are also applicable in, in Absolutely. some. Absolutely. Yeah, we really, we've been using the uh, National Instruments develop, uh, vision system pretty heavily lately. Okay. Been real happy with it. All right, let's um, maybe move back and talk a little bit about the HMI. Um, and again, I know you're demonstrating a, a show machine, but, but basically what types of um, features will the operator find at, at his panel? Well, this is actually an industrial PC right here. The application that we're running is an ActiveX container. Okay. And that allows us to do some interesting things, like in this case, we're just dropping a Cognex object onto the HMI, and now we've got the, uh, what the camera's seeing integrated right into the HMI with very little code. Uh, it also allows us to put in things like a web browser. So if we wanted to browse out to production reports, we could do that right from the HMI. Now, on the, on the opposite side, would that at some point allow you to get to do diagnostics back in through the firewall if they let you? Absolutely. Um, that's a very interesting topic. It's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little bit separate from the uh, HMI itself, but we are using uh, you know, web-based remote support extensively. Now again, for we get you can do alarming here. You can do operator warnings, both at the local level and um, can you push them into an asset management system? Uh, yeah, you know, one of the things that we're seeing right now is just the ease of pushing data around networks. At the local level, right here, we built in some things that you don't always see on uh, people's uh, control systems. We have a running Pareto of okay. uh, machine faults. Uh, which we find an incredibly useful diagnostic for us and also for our customer. But we can push the same kind of data up to a SQL Server database. Uh, we have a standard platform for doing that in a very cost-effective way. We can give our customers uh, the ability to create their own OEE reports, uh, talking about yield and machine performance. Okay. Now, this machine could be either PLC controlled or PC based, depending upon preference or application? Yeah, like uh, I described as we're very agnostic when it comes to control systems. This happens to be a Rockwell control platform. Uh, we, we automate very heavily off the Siemens platform. So this would be location specific, region specific? Location, customer, and application specific. Uh, we do a number of machines um, off of a, just a visual basic uh, control platform and also National Instruments uh, LabVIEW. Now again, this is a show machine, it's not going to have nearly as, as much of the automation as you might be building. Um, typical safety requirements for a machine like this, where would we be at? Well, we always do a risk assessment before we design the uh, control circuit, but as a general practice we always start with a category 3 uh, circuit. So it's a fully redundant e-stop and guard circuit. Um, and one of the things that that, you know, one of the big cha game changers that we see in the industry right now is the ease of, um, of implementing a Category 3 safety circuit. Currently, uh, when you have a uh, Category 3 safety circuit and you have something like an AC drive, you have to go and actually pull the power from that AC right. drive in a redundant right. fashion. So you've got two large contactors both doing the same job. But what we're seeing right now throughout the uh, throughout our supply base is the safe off technology becoming more and more available. What that means to us as an integrator is that we don't have to have large contactors pulling bus power. We can go in with uh, smaller relays and in a safe manner uh, put the machine into a safe state. In fact, can we get, the, get into the panel a little bit? That's probably where we can see some of what, at least the current level of, of safety equipment you got in here. Um, so you got your safety relays. So yeah, right here, some redundancy our, there. Our monitored safety relays. One one of those is for our guard circuit. The other one's for our e-stop circuit. And then because we have these two levels of safety and the drives we happen to be using on this don't have safe off. See two pairs of redundant contactors. What we're seeing on our uh, what we're seeing possible right now is to eliminate all those contactors sure. right there. 
and just having safety relays. Uh, this machine also has uh, local, locally landed I.O. So you see a lot of panel space just dedicated to terminal blocks. Sure. Uh, we're employing Ethernet IP heavily for our on-machine I.O. So we're seeing our control cabinets shrink. Now is that also sort of a regional or a customer specific thing? If you're looking at device net or Ethernet IP Probably regionally not. or? Yeah, it really comes down to the controller that you're using and then sometimes some of the peripheral hardware that you're trying to integrate with that. In this case, uh, FANUC uh, had a really nice device net adapter, so we have a little bit of device net on this machine. We're really seeing Ethernet IP as uh, really our network of choice. The camera, the Cognix camera that we have right there is being triggered over Ethernet IP. Now, as, as your automation strategies move forward and as your customer requirements Keep moving forward. Um, I hear a lot about that, that machine safety integrated with machine control moving forward is, is pretty much um, top of the list. Is that is that part of the uh, the strategy as you see it going out? Yeah, you know I, I think that uh, that's really becoming a real possibility. We are doing uh, safety on Ethernet currently. We're doing safety on OSI, and you know combining uh, net, networks with safety. Again, it's reducing the size of our control enclosures dramatically. The amount of wiring that we have to do, and we're getting more and more diagnostics under the safety side. Now, because you guys are, are selling worldwide, have you settled in largely on particular global standards to say this is your minimum level and this is what you provide on all your machines, almost regardless of region? Yeah, when it comes to uh, safety, we really look to EN 954. Okay. We do understand that that may be getting phased out uh, this year, and we will follow the next European standard. Uh, from an electrical build perspective, we follow NFPA and EN 60204. Those two standards are so closely harmonized now that it really isn't a very onerous task. And it took a while, but at least they are much more similar than they used to be. Absolutely. You know, I think we've about covered it. Jim, okay. I appreciate the time. Thanks very much. Really good explanation. Excellent. I'm Joe Feely for ControlDesign.com. Uh, if you're a machine builder or a system integrator who'd like to be the focus of one of these spotlights at some time in the future, get a hold of me, send me an email, give me a call. We'll see what we can figure out. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time.